Welcome on this first tutorial, this first part in which we will cover the basics of a PPA. Um, it is part of a long series that will cover more about the chemistry, about the processing, about PPA for metal replacement and even PPA that you can simulate and, and show predictability. But let's first cover the basics of a PPA. To understand that, you have to realize a PPA is of course a polymer. It's a long chain that consists of different building blocks. Before we go into the details of a PPA, you have to realize that a PPA, we have to understand what a polyamide is. So let's first dive into that one. A polyamide consists of different building blocks, different molecules. Uh, you need carbon, you need nitrogen, you need oxygen. And of course you need two monomers that have to react to each other. For a polyamide you need a diamine and you need a diacid group. You can see them over here. They are going to react with each other and that's a so-called polycondensation reaction. And in that reaction you are going to eliminate water. And then you form a very important amide group. You see that back in any polyamide. In the industry, polyamide 66 is used in a, for a very broad range of applications. Here you see the typical polyamide 66. Again, you see two building blocks, two monomers. One over here, the other one over here. You see on the left the amine, on the right you see uh, the acid, the diacid group, and in the middle you see the amide group. But what if you are going to change part of that chemistry? What if you're going to build in a ring structure? Then you make a semi-aromatic polyamide. You see here the terephthalate, which is the abbreviation, it's a T. So you're going to build in a ring structure. But what's going to happen with a ring structure? Why can you make use of that? So let's first recap. A PPA is a polyphthalamide. It's part of the polyamide family and it's called, it's so-called a semi-aromatic polymer because of that ring structure. But why PPAs? What can we, can we do with it? If you compare them with a polyamide 66, typically you see with PPAs that they have a better chemical resistance. That can be engine oil, that can be transmission oil, brake fluid, road salt, different types of acid, water glycol. PPAs have a much better chemical resistance. They also show a very slow and very low moisture absorption. A polyamide 66 can absorb moisture and go to equilibrium in around two weeks, where for a PPA that takes even longer, you need around half a year. The dimensional stability of a PPA is also much better than with a polyamide 66 due to this low absorption of different types of chemicals or moisture. And last but not least, the mechanical properties of a PPA, they are much more stable over temperature. So the retention is much better. We'll dive a little bit deeper into that part. You can also ask yourself, are there then also some disadvantages about PPAs? Well, there are two that are normally named. The first one is processing and the second one is stress concentration. Typically you need with the processing of a PPA, you need higher temperatures higher temperatures in the melt, higher temperature of your mold during injection mold, uh, molding, and you also have to take care of the residence time. The second part is stress concentrations. Uh, PPA, PPAs have more difficulties with dealing with stress concentrations in multi-actual load cases. Don't worry, because the latest generations of PPA are more than, uh, more than easy to, to deal with that. So if we go to a polyamide 66, how does the mechanical performance of a PPA 66 look like? You see on the vertical axis, you see for example the stiffness of the material, and you see on the horizontal axis you see the temperature. A polyamide 66 looks like this. There are three points very important in the property profile. The first one is the melt temperature. Above the melt temperature, of course, the polymer is fluid. Below that, it's solid. Then you have the crystallization temperature, also very important because then the material gets its structural integrity. And the third point is the glass transition temperature. You see that you, there is a big step change in mechanical performance after the glass transition temperature. You here you see the rubbery plateau and here on the 
high part you see the rigid or the glassy state where the polymer has its highest strength and its highest stiffness. How does it differentiate from a PPA? With a PPA, the 6T that we have just explained, the glass transition temperature can be increased from, for example, 70 degrees up to 125 or 130 degrees. So the operating temperature is increased. The melt temperature also is increased, meaning that you also can deal with higher peak temperatures. So PPAs have an advantage in mechanical performance. There are also some polymers called PA40, also a PPA, where you can even boost the glass transition temperature to around 160 degrees C, meaning that with these materials you can even further expand your operating window. So how does a 40 differentiate from the other uh, PPAs like a 60? Again, you see the two different building blocks. You see a four block over here and you see the ring structure, the T structure over there. And in the middle, of course, the AMI group that you already know. How does it differentiate? You s you, due to the fact that you have a relatively short uh, four block, the AMI density of these materials is increased. They can form more hydrogen bonds and therefore also get a higher strength material. These materials also have the highest aromatic content and that's helpful for your chemical resistance. The more ring structures in there, the better the chemical resistance. The material also is able to push out the glass transition temperature to 160 degrees C, meaning that your operating window is further increased. Now we, cover, we covered the basics about PPAs. I hope you enjoyed it. I also hope to see you back in part two and part three, where we are going to discuss more about the chemistry, more processing and some other topics around PPAs. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you.